Autumn Nations Cup, the final Saturday game, sees Wales take on Italy. Wales, yeah, they've been a bit disappointing. One win and uh, two losses thus far. The win coming against Georgia. Under the pump, under a fair bit of pressure, you would say, is Wayne Pivak. Um, Italy have played two games and lost both of them. Um, I've put zero wins there, but you can call it a win if you want. The cancelled game against Fiji where they were defaulted to give a 28-0 win to Italy. But in terms of games played, that is correct. Um, but yeah, I'll go through the squads, which I will put in the description as well. Some of the recent games. Some things to look out for. And uh, yeah, you guys let me know what you reckon about this one. Um, Italy, I would say, have been a bit disappointing, especially last week against a much changed, almost like French B side, and they still got pretty well beaten. I honestly expected a fair bit more from Italy in that one. Now they're coming up against a Wales side, which is under a lot of pressure. Nobody's expecting Italy to win this one, so maybe they go into this one as sneaky underdogs who can who can pip them in sports you never know man but uh the welsh guys could do for wayne pivak what the all blacks did for ian foster in their final game and is to to send off the season with a big win and have all the critics kind of hushed over the non-international period until the next year's games which aren't that far away but still um that would certainly make Wayne Pivak's Christmas a wee bit more pleasant. Um, they've they've swung a bit of an axe in terms of the Welsh squad. Lots of changes. Nicky Smith starts ahead of Wynne Jones, loose head. Sam Perry gets his first start at hooker. And Tom Francis is at tight head. So last week it was Jones, uh, Elias and Lee. This week it's Smith, Perry, Francis. So all new front row. Uh, Rollins comes in for ball. Alan Wynne Jones is there um, as captain as per normal. Uh, Botham is there at six. Remember, he played seven last week. He takes the spot of Lewis Hughes. That's because Tipperick is back, so he takes his familiar seven jersey. And Falatau continues on at eight. Botham was good, man, so I'm pretty happy to see him get some more game time because he looked good. I'm not saying Lewis Hughes didn't look good. They both look good. Uh, but Botham, man, seems to have a proper ticker on him. Uh, Kieran Hardy gets the nod at nine. Lloyd Williams... Time in the sun has come and gone pretty quickly. Uh, Sheedy gets the, the nod at 10 as well. So Dan Bigger is out of the 23. Johnny Williams is one of the guys who continues on in his jersey last week uh, in 12. George North is back in the squad and he's in the midfield. He's at 13. So he takes the spot of Tompkins. I would have liked to see Williams and Tompkins for, for another week, personally. I think that's a combo that needs that needs time. And if you're thinking long term, I'm not sure North at 13 is the answer. I know North, like Sexton, is one of the other guys who's hit back and told people to basically bugger off and stop telling him he needs to retire. But, yeah, I'm not the coach of Wales, so Wayne Pivak can do what he likes. Uh, Reese Samets there on the left wing. Another man who needs a bit more time. Josh Adams on the right. Pretty pretty solid looking uh wing combo and liam williams is back from like the lip injury that he had so he takes the spot of lee halfpenny at fullback so it's really like to kick the ball a bit so having liam williams there at 15 is definitely a secure pair of hands but then again so is halfpenny you're pretty you're pretty safe either way the bench is d jones that's win jones uh brown comes in to the side so there's no reese carry this week um Lee is out as well. Uh, Hill is in. So Rollins starts, like I mentioned, and um, and Ball's out. Wainwright's still there. Gareth Davis. And Lloyd is in. There's no uh, bigger, as I mentioned, Sheedy's starting. And uh, Holmes is in. So there's no Watkin. Man, it's a lot of changes. A lot of changes. And, I mean, in his presser, he basically said he's giving guys an opportunity. So, yeah, still trying to figure out what those best combinations are. If you're thinking full World Cup cycle, I see the logic behind it. I would also like to see some guys get maybe a bit of a more settled lineup 
really put Italy to the sword and then yeah reassess next year but still maybe it's time to be experimenting it's just like Wales aren't usually under this much pressure so I would have thought in the pressure cooker situation it's time to I don't know anyway let him do what he does. Uh, there's still no Navidi. He's still suffering with concussion, I believe, which is unfortunate. Uh, for Italy, it's much less changed. Uh, Fischetti is their uh, loose head. Biji is captain at two, and Zilocchi is at three. So it's the same front row as we've seen, I think, in most of the games. Lazzaroni and Canoni are the locks, as per usual. In Banda, Maya and Stain, six, seven, and eight. So it's the same forward pack as last week remember there's no Poledri because he's injured which is a pretty unfortunate one uh Vani gets a start isn't he only like 19 he starts ahead of Violi who was a bit criticized after last week's game Garbisi though continues on at 10 Kana and Zanon is that that same midfield Zanon seems to be the guy who carries the ball up and Carlo Kana is the defensive tackler which I'm still trying to get my head around as many times I see him do that role. Uh, Monte Ioane is going to get his debut on the left wing, and that's great to see. Because although I don't watch the Pro 14 a lot, when I saw him for Benetton in the Champions Cup last year, end of last year or start of this year, he looked proper dangerous. So I'm pretty pleased for him. Uh, Spiridinio moves from left wing to right, and Trua moves from fullback to, uh, sorry, moves from right wing to fullback. The bench is Girardini, Ferrari, Cicerelli, Kikarelli. My Italian pronunciation still needs work. Uh, Stoyan, Lamoro, Palazzani, Allen, and Mori. So it's a lot more stable, you'd have to say, than the Welsh lineup. Will that make a difference? Oh, I think Minotti has also got like a bruise. I think he's got a bruise. So I used the translated news story, Google Translate, from Italian into English. So they mentioned Minotti and bruise. So I'm assuming he's got some kind of injury keeping him out. That article did make a big point of how young this Italian side is, though. So, um, yeah. Uh, the the coach, Franco Smith, basically said they want to end the tournament in the best way. So maybe that's why he's going with the more stable lineup, whereas Pivak is give players an opportunity. That maybe justifies his lineup. So, uh, yeah. I mean, 36-5 last week to France, though, was was pretty disappointing. The error rate from, from Italy was just too high just really bad they didn't look after the ball they were they were getting turned over um for wales man their line out it's like 73 percent last week goodness it needs to be higher that's frustrating that that's that you can make a difference in training fix the the bleeding line out man that's that's frustrating um wales going to this massive favorites bookies over here in new zealand say 17 points for wales 17 point favorites the rugby forecast algorithm goes even further and it says 27 point favorites for wales i think most wales fans would take that 27 points um the average over the last five games has been 41 12 so wales in recent times have definitely had italy's number um and actually remember the last time they played in the six nations i think it was pivac's first game in charge was it first six nations game in charge 42 nil it all seems like a long time ago now but 42 nil was a pretty bloody comfortable victory mm, definitely take that this time but anyway uh what do you guys reckon are italy with their more stable lineup any kind of chance if they can get things right over 80 minutes they don't seem like they've got the the gas to go the entire way and uh will pivax changes click or do you think they will still be a bit disjointed and we may see some frustrating play from Wales? I don't know. There's certainly some exciting players. There's some young guys in that team. So it will be an interesting one to watch. But yeah. You guys let me know your thoughts on this one. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.